सिक्स लेक्चर संडे लेक्चर्स ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर एसोसिएशन लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स वेयर ऑन सोलर टेक्नोलॉजी बाय डॉक्टर एंड आई थिंक लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज क्रिएटेड टूडे टूडे लेक्चर इज इन लाइन विद दैट एंड हाउ द बीआरटी ट्रांसपोर्ट इन पुणे कैन बी इलेक्ट्रीफाइड यूजिंग सोलर टेक्नोलॉजी and it can reduce the cost drastically and passengers will shell out very low money as far as their commuting is concerned and it will be one of the cheapest mode of transport in pune mr abankar if you remember he gave a presentation last year on how maruti 100 can be made hybrid using solar as well as electric and make a cost effective solution for transportation so abankar is a, a technocrat owning appropriate technology and he is uh, famous in dima that is defense electronic manufacturers association for creating innovative solutions today's lecture is also not a rocket science it has been done across the globe use of solar technology and there is a big deal going to happen in pune for purchase of new buses and i don't think they are solar they are having solar rooftops so humble suggestion is to introduce solar rooftops on each bus that tmc is going to procure in near future mr avinash ambankar give in 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 depth solution today in his presentation uh, he is a electronic engineer graduated from indore and done a uh, lot of activities in his life you must have seen his bio data so far so without wasting much time i request mr avinash ambankar to start his presentation how brt can be electrified using solar panels and make a cost effective transportation for pune kar over to mr avinash abhyankar thank you this is avinash abhyankar see i have been a power electronics engineer for over uh, 50 years now and i am proud to be associated with the growth of silicon technology by itself you will be surprised that my first project in iit was induction motor inverter control for electric car and this was uh, my interest started with electric vehicle since 1968 and i have grown with germanium transistors and right up to today's uh, uh in i would say the uh, integrated computers which are in your palm today now coming back to the basic topic i have been interested in solar energy since 1986 and solar energy i consider as one of the prime driving forces for our country is like if one calls agriculture i call agriculture is basically a solar culture because it starts with what you need is sunlight land earth and some seeds and water so all the five sources of energy which are available in nature are abundantly available in nature therefore it's more like an energy and we are fortunate to get that for almost 300 Uh, days in a year so if we don't use it ourselves it is only our folly and we can't just keep on blaming that the western world didn't uh, lead us into that direction now coming to this what i would like to do is i have uh, divided my talk today in these 13 uh, different steps now i always like to start with the uh, history of electric vehicle EV is really EV was the first uh, transport which pulled the horse pulled car by a DC motor. And you will be surprised that I think sir, as uh, Mr. Uh, as Vilas Ravde mentioned, I gave a talk in 2018, I think February or March, where uh, I had gone through uh, substantial work on uh, internet. to find out that uh, this the dc motor horse was pulled out 
and a DC motor driven cart was made in 1820. Till early 19th century, the DC motor driven cars held almost 70% of uh, the cars produced. During the late 80s and early 19th century, IC engine and gasoline fuel cars started taking over from electric cars. With the introduction of battery powered starter followed with the production line to bring down the cost by Ford and with ex extraction of cheap fuel, automobile production started the economic revolution. Mass transport using electric motors in trams and trolleybuses used over its energy supply. That means the uh, production of the bus was done way back in the early 19th century. You will be surprised that in India, BEST, Bombay Electric Supply and Transport, they operated trolley buses and trams during 1940s and 50s. And so was Calcutta Electric. They also uh, powered their trolley buses and trams in uh, Calcutta. One of the major advantages which was found uh, by using in comparison to trams was that the buses using rubber tires, they were found advantageous to negotiate gradient due to better addition compared with the steel wheels on rails. Now, as I mentioned to you, the primary sources really come from, although you know it says earth, water, sun, and air, air and space. In our Panchatattvas, we define them as Akash, Vayu, Agni, Jala, and Prithvi. And it is said that they appeared in this sequence. And if you look at the sequence, Akash, Vayu, and Agni, which is Surya. So now this is the sequence. And until Einstein described it as E equal to mc square, we were just using it as it came to us. But the, the transportation industry started using it exactly in the opposite direction. They started digging the earth for finding out all the fuels. They came out of earth. First it came as wood. Thereafter what you got was coal and then you got oil. So it was in that sequence that we started consuming energy and just ignored the solar energy. Now, it would be wrong on my part to say that we ignored. Mm. India has been using sun's energy for ages. Our even food and all the supplies, now you find everybody saying sun-dried tomatoes. We have been using all technology for food preservation, which was in terms of dry. And it never went about going with uh, refrigeration, which was a derivative of some other energy sources. We were um, prevented from using direct energy, which is available to us, because it was perhaps made easily available. Uh, the sequence was like coal was discovered first, and then it was oil. But the electrical energy, it started by about 1850. Now, this is just a summary of uh, the EVs. That is 1820 to 1860, the steam engine replaced horse cart. Then in 20, oil-fired boilers started using the steam run engines. And 1830 to 1900, these vehicles were powered by electric motor. And later on, gasoline engine took over. Now, this picture will just give you the how these early days of uh, electric truck and what were the limitations of the electric vehicle. Now coming to our main topic of bus. If you look at this picture, it is the same bus which we are even looking at it today. No. The, uh, it clearly means that we had adequate knowledge about the available uh, with uh, what was available to develop electric buses. Now, then uh, why was it that this uh, technology was not uh, 
used or introduced into the operation they were uh, faded out now i went through an article by swajner and weidman he showed a comparison of all uh, drive train configurations and their energy now i would like just to show you the energy graph now if you look at this it clearly shows that the uh, the first one is what your diesel energy now he has taken an example for a brt like situation where energy consumption for a 12 meter bus during 19 hours of operation a line length of so many miles etc and he has given here the total kilowatt hour that uh, it require and the three dip, uh, losses in uh, uh, energy source and energy at the wheel now if you see the energy at the wheel is marginally different but if you go to electric the last two the full electric bus and uh, battery electric bus there is one more element here which shows the uh, trolley bus i think if this uh, at the end of it there is the trolley bus which is very very low because this portion is not there which uses very little energy from the grid now coming back to the uh, trolley bus issue now this is the structure is the same except that it is collecting the energy from the pantograph there is no battery anywhere involved so they have taken care of this by providing electricity electrical energy now if you look at the uh, maze of wiring now this is definitely a nuisance nobody will want this kind of uh, nuisance so uh, the today's metro by elevated metros or underground you are taking care of this maze just pushing it about uh, in the z axis it came back to this is just showing on a street you know what exactly is happening here now what's happening today traditionally the city bus expectation from a diesel bus the city bus it requires to do about 225 to 240 kilometers every day in one charge energy required at the wheel is i have done the study and if you can uh, just convert the uh, kilowatts to megajoules at the wheel you will come to this number the diesel and cng they take about 4300 megajoules the weight is very low 110 liters of fuel is good enough the ev with 240 km range it requires only considering the energy efficiency between these two i have taken it slightly on the lower side 1200 megajoules but the weight of the battery is phenomenally high now if one looks at this the trolley bus has eliminated this uh, 2 to 2.5 tons when i always like to call this as uh, somebody asked you may write the ramayana's example when lakshman was down uh, he was asked to get that sanjeevani now he could not identify between uh, on the mountain so he brought that dronagiri mountain so when you want to put all the battery stored energy when you can't solve the problem you just bring the whole as a brute force this is what is today's answer to the uh, to replace this 110 liters of fuel by this 2.5 tons of weight this was slight digression but now if you look at uh, the the present day when we are trying to get the uh, 2.5 tons of uh, battery being charged it is being charged by uh, coal as a primary source and from the power plant to this if you look at this it goes through so such a big circuit and finally you will need this entire infrastructure to supply the energy to all the buses so imagine if there is a fleet of 100 buses and so many uh, uh, 250 kilowatt uh, kwh batteries are to be charged and in a span of 10 minutes now it will be impractical to go through and say that it is uh, so many megawatts of power is required 
and all electrical engineers will agree that if such a sudden loading appears, one can imagine what will happen to the stability of the grid. You know, uh, you solve one problem and create another. So instead of uh, going it this way, the uh, that is where I thought that getting the BRT as a uh, practical solution, we will be able to eliminate this entire maze of providing energy to the uh, public transport. Which are the major issues in terms of you now, which are the limitations and strengths of electric vehicle? Now, operating range is decided by battery capacity. So, when you get caught between giving a range or optimize the weight, the energy density you can just compare with what the liquid fuel gives you. So, there is no point in uh, discussing about this issue. Fortunately, the complex BMS uh, series connection with uh, a number of cells involved. This has taken care of the uh, issue of uh, reliable energy source mm -hmm. on board. Mm -hmm. The high recharge time uh, is also one of the limiting factors because you can't charge the battery in 10 minutes. If you want to charge it, you are going to sacrifice the cycle life. And most importantly, there is a psychology in the mind of the driver. Battery is supposed to be in this whole set, the most unreliable component in the proven system of transport. So now how to get over it? So you need an insurance. Now that is insurance, is that some, some interruption? Oh, no. You need an insurance and that insurance can all uh, will need reserve power. Now to give you, this is what I picked out from one of the articles. Si this has been again in the discussion for ages. Size of batteries, a range of 250 kilometers requires two tons, which is equivalent to 30 to 40 passenger load. That means by either you compromise with number of people to be carried or uh, take the dead weight with you. Over and above that, with today's uh, demanding uh, application, you need air conditioners and air compressor for tilting the bus for passengers, uh, alighting and um, uh, for boarding the bus. So these all get additional energy um, uh, from the system. Now, how do you go about the 20, uh, 21st century transport? Perhaps this lithium ion battery for a smaller, uh, up to a certain in, uh, payload, the, uh, you can make a uh, fully battery based electric vehicle with a compromised range. Now, maybe a car will be a uh, good optimum solution for using a uh, self sufficient, uh, fully battery driven vehicle because of its duty. While the public transport requires to operate in, uh, uh, is about 16 hours to 18 hours period. Now there are certain advantages which we can, uh, with the technology. The PMAC motors or DC or synchronous electrons motors improved, uh, they have improved, substantially improved motor efficiency. Power electronics has converted. I, I started calling this as power processing rather than calling it power electronics because everybody wants the DSP, digital signal processing. So here power electronics provides you with all the energy processing. It does both energy as well as power, instantaneous control. The simulation techniques can give you what exactly you can achieve with various energy sources in a synergical form. On a vehicle, when you have multiple ECUs connected with CAN, you go close to the human uh, nervous system, which allows you substantial flexibility. But 
with all this sophistication, you are still faced with the challenge of range, recharge time, and weight of battery. Now, how does one get over these three aspects? Now, particularly looking at the public transport, where you are in the cities, the bus duty, or even the car, the duty always goes through this kind of cycle. You have an acceleration mode, a cruising mode, and a deceleration mode. If you look at this, where you have a peak power demand, if the energy and power is like N into T. Here, the energy is low, but the torque demand is high. Here, the energy demand is high and torque demand is low. That's why your cruising power is a substantially low. When you are decelerating or braking, there are several start stops. Now, electric vehicle gives you this regeneration uh, mode where you can start optimizing the energy that you have. Now, if you take typically a 18 ton bus, you have got a four ton payload and rest of it 14 ton is every time you are accelerating and braking. In the conventional DC bus, you have no way of taking this out. You are just dumping it into brakes. So now here comes the energy management rather than trying to do the uh, battery management. Now, the next slide will show you what, this is a typical uh, cycle which is available on the website, which is a, uh, a city cycle. Typically, they, they call it DBDC, some Delhi uh, duty, uh, bus cycle, duty cycle. Now, you will be surprised to see that it is a maximum distance that it shows is about 800 meters and it covers in about 166 seconds. This gives us something like five meters per second as a speed of the vehicle, which amounts to 18 kilometers an hour. So really the average speed of the bus is so low that the energy demand on an average 18 meter per, um, uh, 18 kilometers per hour, um, it won't require more than 16 to 18 uh, kilowatts of power. So the total energy, if you multiply 16 uh, kilowatts for 16 hours, it is just 256 kilowatt hour, which is required as a battery capacity. Now, instead of going into that uh, full battery capacity, you will see the, uh, the next slide just gives you the battery technology with its limitations. Now, every battery can work best between, say, 10 to 90% of its uh, DOD. The cycle life is improved if your depth of discharge is limited. The charging rate is always lower than its discharge rate. You can discharge it at uh, twice the capacity, while you cannot charge it at better than about 0.5 or 0.2, uh, 0.5C. So now we can work on the battery specifications for optimizing what is the right size of onboard battery. Here I have just given a uh, comparison with the present uh, diesel powered buses. They are self-sufficient. Uh, bus has about 120 to 160 liter fuel tank. Refueling is only 10 minutes. Equivalent EV requires this, which is about say 300 kilo, kilowatt hour of battery. Now, recharging this requires two hours in fast charge at the cost of battery life, cycle life. Now, this energy, if you draw from a coal fired power plant, which I already showed you, this uh, a coal fired power plant is just giving you a shift of your uh, um, uh, pollution. Instead of Pune, you have shifted it to Chandrapur. You haven't achieved anything. So really, this becomes a way of what we call as biodiversity park kind of a concept, that you have uh, your lungs placed elsewhere and you are operating somewhere else. So the real solution lies in going to uh, a green energy where you have the minimum greenhouse gas emission. Now I have done, uh, there was an article in Sakai, you know, which said that uh, 
6.5 kilometer uh, Katras to uh, Swargat BRT road is uh, so I thought that this can be the best example to study in terms of what can be achieved with BRT. Now I have just taken that route and taken one bus as an example, which can be then extrapolated to different uh, kind of modes. Now I have considered that this track, one bus can make uh, three one-way trips. That's about 20 minutes uh, one-way ride. And this will require 250 kWh for 16 hours a day, which complies exactly with what the today's requirement of uh, energy on bus is required. Now, let's look at the PV. Now, there is no rocket science. This is available everywhere. That how many kilowatt hour per meter? I have just converted it into meter instead of per square meter. Because right now, we are talking about the bus route in per meter. So, I just use that as it, it can collect 5 kilowatt hour per meter of a uh, 6 meter width of BRT uh, width. Now, one bus stop, if we cover of a 17 meter length, because if we consider a 12 meter bus with both sides uh, over end, now it can harness 85 kilowatt hour during the day. That means if you have three bus stops, three bus stops will harness 250 kilowatt hour for one bus. Now, it's up to us to now schedule how many buses you want to have on the track, etc. Now, you can use a flash charger on every bus stop. The flash, char flash charger can easily transfer an energy. You need a device on the bus which will absorb the energy at the rate at which we can deliver. Now, uh, one of the ways in which it can be done is the distance between bus stops is say 500 meters. Now, this 500 meters requires only a half kWh of energy to be replenished. Now, if I want to put half kWh of energy, a 120 kilowatt flash charger can easily uh, be delivered into a um, uh, onboard battery of a suitable size with a combination of maybe a capacitor or whatever device we choose to front end on the bus. A 16 kilowatt average power is required over 16 hours. That's what I mentioned earlier. Now, an onboard battery can be reduced to provide say up to four hours of reserve. That is 64 kWh of battery is adequate to go on the bus. So it will free the bus of 200 kilowatt hour of battery installed, which can easily give you about uh, 30 passengers. Now, the question with uh, solar energy, everybody asks, uh, what do you do when there are no Sundays as well as in the rainy season? Now, the answer to this is, you see, IC engine is a fairly compact device when operated on a fixed speed, the engine can run at reasonably good efficiency. So now a typical 800 cc engine can easily develop uh, up to 16 kilowatts of power. The uh, best example which is available is if you go to Maruti Swift, which, they, which used the Italian 1200 cc engine. This engine develops up to 75 kilowatts of power. Now this power and energy equation. One can use it uh, judiciously. On demand, you can switch it on and off with the uh, intelligence required for energy management. So it can uh, replace this 140 kilowatt of engine on a nine meter bus. So straight away, it, um, uh, it eliminates the uh, need of utility-based charging stations as infrastructure uh, as a prerequisite to starting the uh, e-bus program. Later on, you can be replaced with hydrogen fuel cell. Now here also, I would like to see when you have a hydrogen fuel cell to generate hydrogen, how, how many joules are required when you are generating hydrogen. Somebody will ask um, uh, how many kilowatt hour are required to create solar panels. Now there, uh, 
currently i can use uh, what's generally given that if for making one watt uh, of solar panel uh, in its lifetime it does so many watt hour while creating that it uh, requires a fraction of energy now i understand there is a substantial uh, improvement uh, in solar technology which perhaps with the cadmium telluride taking over the uh, energy required for developing those uh, cadmium telluride cells will be substantially lower than perhaps the silicon based cells now i will now this is where you come to your uh, a complete solution from primary source the traditional way to go to the vehicle and going into the uh, uh, wheel while this is going through the hydrogen production and through the same route so nobody is questioning the front end electric so the first and important foremost parameter is go into an electric drive and go backwards for reducing this strain energy so i have just re uh, realized that if we follow this route this route will give you a quick implementation program rather than just trying to say that when this will be ready any even if you have a metro it will not take le less than 5 years to get you going and you know the rate at which our uh, um, uh, population grows or demand changes in 5 years the scene is different so at that time maybe you require something else and not now what is required now and you know, i usually like to call a project which can be implemented in a uh, nature cycle of 9 months anything more than that then uh, it starts losing its significance now let's look at the economics everybody talks of economics i am not a economic specialist but i can just use some of the numbers to drive my point that we are not uh, generally engineers are called talking theory and rubbish but when you add economics to it it starts getting more rubbish more uh, uh, semantics apart see cost of pv panels uh, for getting 250 kilowatt hour at today's rates of which are decreasing further it say 10 lakhs and 250 kilowatt hour stationary battery lithium ion um, will cost about 25 lakhs so you get about 40 lakhs as a total cost now cost of 120 kw 1 minute flash charger if you take 3 units because for one bus you require 3 units now here the beauty is because solar panels are intrinsically a current limited source so you don't need very highly sophisticated system over here you can design the power electronics which will not cost more than 2 lakhs a piece so you get it around 6 lakhs the less the reduction of on board battery which is about 22 lakhs because it requires uh, to be homologation uh, and the uh, road worthy battery package etc less the cost of 150 kw charging stations and uh, each station will cost about uh, today's charging station minimum cost is around 15 lakhs now increase in capex with all this is just 9 lakhs the substation cost i have not included in all this costing now the energy saving cost per year it goes to about 6.85 lakhs now taking into account the carbon credits the capex will definitely overshoot whatever you are spending in the initial uh, expenditure so uh, really this is costing nothing and all this what you need is only operational expenditure energy costs are for free after doing all this and mind well even with today's lithium ion battery technology everybody is talking about uh, second life of these battery packs tesla went into power wall the simple reason of that power wall is you take out the battery which is not able to uh, provide the accelerating energy and use it for a stationary application so now looking ahead you may ultimately get these batteries at much cheaper price now 
the way forward i consider as distributed energy can provide a cleaner and sustainable uh, public transport the uh, example which i have taken for one bus it will open up several avenues for fleet management optimization in scheduling the buses and most importantly the at the planning stage you know where the um, today even with metro integrated with it you will need um, substantial parking lots to reach that spot now instead if you have got shorter route buses which can just go around and uh, drop people at the metro stations um, uh, obviously you will eliminate the uh, um, uh, crowding of streets it will open a window for uh, redesign of vehicle architecture for lighter vehicles reducing the cruising power and energy both it makes the vehicle atmanirbhar both in energy and intelligence the i have uh, suggested a schematic of what it could be now i have been the a ardent st uh, student of uninterrupted power supply starting right from 500 watts to a uh, 2000 kilowatt of uh, uh, ups and everywhere the issues were what you can take care of a 10 minute 15 minute half an hour of the battery life while for sustaining and continuously you never apply any battery for more than 3 to 4 hours anything going beyond that it is uh, i call it harakiri you know it is not something which is primary source you are trying to replace with a stored source it is not possible even for launching satellites you have got the liquid fuel or some solid fuel um, uh, which is required to give a thrust thereafter cruising it takes care of by itself now you notice here i have got a ic engine generator which can be replaced by hydrogen or whichever other mode of uh, energy conversion you get with a higher density now here i am reminded of a movie mission impossible many of you must have seen this movie where tom cruise is just protecting a scientist and every time you are curious that what is he doing you know putting some uh, element into the wine chiller or you know if you and at the end of the movie uh, the villain usually takes away the uh, two cells goes into the helicopter and it blows and then the scientist says that i have uh, managed to solve the problem as you go closer to energy densities it is the thermal design which will take over and that seems to be uh, not a very safe way of going by compromising with the energy density so this element to an extent might remain in the, in the long run to be sustainable you will be surprised to note this wind turbine if you have studied the uh, cruising power of a vehicle there is a it is divided in three elements one is your uh, road friction the second one is uh, wind and the third one is gradient so now gradient will talk about the acceleration and things like that but the third, second one which is wind the wind is very important now you have to look at the aircraft design opposite of which is what you need in a ground vehicle design so if you make a vehicle which when it speeds up instead of consuming uh, uh, resisting that energy you use it to convert for giving you on board power to mitigate the uh, demand which is given by the speed so you start using it to help you to reduce the energy consumption and pv or the rooftop pv for the bus which will be with an mppt you go through this and then you got a limited battery bms i have put really a capacitor here which is a strong point for absorbing and delivering energy instantly and you have the drive uh, inverter configuration here 
So you have one element as energy management and you have got a vehicle management. So now this is the structure which I see as a stable and sustainable structure of a vehicle. So you are present uh, gas stations and everything will be used at a lower level here. So you stabilize with certain minimum level of um, IC engine. So you don't have um, make the uh, available technology obsolete overnight. The entire ecosystem can be sustained because you can never get rid of the traditional sources which are available. We have been only digging and digging, looking downwards. Now, Einstein has shown us the way, look upwards. So keep looking upwards here and this will pave the way for our future development. Thank you. I think I have made uh, everybody triggered in thinking what exactly is uh, feasible. There may be certain things which are more brainstorming than immediately implementable, but I see that it is immediately implementable right now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Avinash Abhankar, for this wonderful presentation. We really appreciate as a TTA. Uh, we will start the question and answer session. First, those who want to ask questions, please identify and ask questions. Hello. Hello. I am Avinash Patil from Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, good Jimmy. morning, sir. Yeah. Huh. Can we think of this uh, bioenergy that is convert, uh, using biofuel and converting converting it into electricity? Yes. You that, that is also a uh, green energy source. You can use bioenergy when you talk of IC. Its supply can be uh, from CNG or bioenergy. Uh, that also goes very close to what we have got in terms of solar energy. Okay. I, I have a slide which shows your bioenergy also, which is uh, quite closer to just one second. That, that is a that is a viable source of green energy. Yes. Around thirteen tons of uh, thirteen tons of uh, biofuel. Mm -hmm. It gives some. I don't have the data. I will tell you the data actually. Bi biofuel is basically you are coming out of your uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of our agricultural waste Ag and agro waste. Yes, agro -waste. complete agro waste, and that agro waste can replace the uh, your conventional diesel or CNG or uh, these uh, elements. But it will be a sustainable energy source for driving the same uh, internal combustion engine. It is not directly converting. There is one. Uh, we have to uh, add some generator so that it will be converted into electricity. Correct, correct. So in the same, uh, in this uh, block diagram, which I have shown here, it shows you that uh, IC engine does stay. Now its input can be changed to bio. Yeah. Uh, next question, please. Okay, can you see this? Yeah. See, there, there is a, I don't know whether it is visible. Uh, now it is visible. Now yeah. it is. See, there are long graphs we show for the fossil fuel. Yeah. And then the first point here we show is, this is a photovoltaics. Yeah. Photovoltaics is, is just 10% of all right from bio. The first bar is bio. And yeah. then you get here. Uh, which is a cadmium telluride photovoltaic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Chaitanya here. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, I would like to ask one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a 23 municipal corporations in Maharashtra. Yes. And uh, this information what you have provided. Uh, can I, I can, 
is really uh, worth and beneficial looks likes to be these corporations for their uh, social travel and uh, internal travel requirement is yeah. there any initiation made and uh, can we work in this direction under the platform of technology transfer association uh, vilas i think vilas rabde will be in a better position to answer whether he can go through tta no i i am a member of tta we can oh, give, give can, a thought certainly. on this you yes. can certainly but yes. any idea do you have sir that any corporations has been approached or we have or any industry has approached to corporations is there any discussion i think uh, uh, i think tta can approach straight away uh, i think at this since i have taken this swargat uh, katras it okay. may be a good initiative to approach them straight away that we want to take this up as a project to on a trial basis wow very really? good excellent excellent yeah i think that is the place where uh, we can have access wow very good excellent and uh, really you give us a very valid and thankful uh, input to us and uh, we expect your support in this direction sir certainly i would like to share what all i know <laughs> oh very good we will have a talk on this let us sure. move for uh, uh, other uh, questions answers from other participants sure yeah any more questions good morning ashok sir up here can i ask a question good morning ashok ashok sir up here can i ask a question yes sir uh okay. looking at your diagram for yeah. a bus Mm. Uh, what is the capacity of the ic engine and generator you are proposing for on board generation roughly 800 to 1200 cc like for a 12 ton that uh, comes from many kilowatts 800 kilowatt. to 1200 cc nothing more than that so uh, when we uh, start converting retrofitting the vehicles mm. uh, for example if i retrofit a rickshaw yeah then i get a engine which i can fit in a car and yeah yeah and Correct. if i retrofit a car then yes. i take the car engine yes. and then fit it in the bus as a generator so this Correct. gives a very good path for re reusing the waste material that comes out from a retrofitted vehicle now i think you can highlight that uh, when you talk to uh, any people is to ensure that uh, the costing uh, for example A rickshaw engine, I was told, is available for forty thousand rupees, whereas the full rickshaw with the engine is being scrapped simply because of the political and uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the monopoly equations that we have in a society for making the rickshaw useless. So this is something that engineering waste that we are creating can be reused. You know. so retrofitting of a smaller vehicle to convert it into a generator to be fitted into the bigger one so if you retrofit a bike bike engine can be used as a generator in a rickshaw i just thought yes. of pointing out that and uh, it's interesting now have you been able to connect with the dapodi workshop uh, which has all the facilities and inclination because the last year they attended the uh, the pune auto expo exhibition and i had been talking to them so i think uh, they have the workshop they have the desire they have the buses mm -hmm. so maybe tta can uh, initiate and we can talk with uh, st workshop which is locally available in dapodi mm -hmm. uh, vilas ji can take some initiative if you know people and i think garpure sir has already contacted them before at the time of exhibition last year mm 